Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on in to Funny Feelings episode 10. I cannot believe we're already in the double digits. I feel like we just got started. But anyway, go get some snacks and coffee and let's get this show on the road. First and foremost, let's quickly recap what happened in episode 9. We spooned Theodore a blood pet. Yep, we did that. Our 11th pet, we got it on 46 hard mode top, Casey. Unfortunately, this is without a doubt my favorite content, but hours wise, this is the fourth longest pet in the game. So this was massive for the speedrun aspect. Immediately following that, we started King Black Dragon pet hunt and ended with 3000 KC, the pet rate. Okay, okay, enough of the past. Let's get episode 10 officially started. Hey guys, I'm Coxie. In early 2020, I obtained all pets in the game, and now it's time to run it back. A fresh new account with no stats or items, starting from scratch. With one goal in mind, speedrunning all pets as fast as possible. This is Funny Feelings. Ah, oh, what a way to start. Let's get day four of KVD kicked off, and I gotta show you my desktop for at least one kill so you can see how beautiful it looks from my point of view. Despite it seeming hectic with all the accounts, I've actually got them set up so there's pretty minimal mouse movement. Anyways, we're nearing 3200 KC. The only thing I got on my mind is grinding out some KC. So let's get going. 95 attack. Okay, we are getting stronger. We've had 99 strength for quite some time. So I'm going to focus on finishing 99 attack with this grind if I can. We're about three hours into our session today and 3600 KC is coming right on up. The big 3,900, only 100 more till 4,000. And you know, grinds like these, they give me a lot of time to think. And I just realized that funny feelings, we've just hit double digit episodes. It feels like we just started yesterday. It is insane the amount of support and enthusiasm you guys have shown for the video. And I guess I've never taken the time to properly thank you guys. So for real, I appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching every single video and supporting the channel as much as you do. Here's to many, many more episodes to come. King Black Dragon is locked away deep in the wilderness. Means of transportation will either be burning amulet to the lava maze or using a wilderness obelisk in your POH to level 44 wilderness. You'll want a gear setup similar to these. Keep in mind, you will be traveling through the wilderness to get here, so either scout the world or spread your gear out on alts to avoid risking a costly death. KBD is one of the oldest bosses in RuneScape, dating all the way back to 2002, and because of that has few and simple mechanics. We can reduce the damage taken from KBD's Dragonfire attacks by combining Protect from Magic and Anti-Fire potions. No Dragonfire shield will be required with this setup. Instead, a Vernic will be brought to maximize DPS. KBD also has a Poison Dragonfire attack, negated by bringing Anti-Venoms, and a Freezing Dragonfire attack, stunning you and preventing combat for a few seconds. Alts for this boss are insanely useful, and the more you can bring, the better. There are two type of alts for this boss. Let's first talk about DPS alts. Their main purpose is to spread around KBD's damage and spec transfer to the main for more Void Waker specs. Void Waker has a guaranteed minimum hit on spec, therefore is very beneficial for securing the most damage on the main and allowing you to get KC credit. Outside of spec transfer, the main thing you'll want to be doing is pot sharing super combats and prayer potions. The spell pot share has some interesting mechanics that we can take advantage of when alting. Firstly, when casting pot share, your character will share doses with players in a 5x5 area centered around themselves. The second thing to consider, doses of the potion are only consumed by other players, not the caster. This means that if only one other player is within the area, one dose will be needed for both the caster and their target, effectively doubling the use of a potion. To take advantage of this, try to spread your characters in a way where only two players are near each other when pot sharing. The second type of alt will be a resupply alt, and don't be fooled by the name, this account will still be used to damage the boss, but will be in charge of healing the team and getting more potions from the bank. For this reason, the value of its gear should be the lowest. Range gear is recommended as it's very little risk and still good DPS output. King Black Dragon's KPH fluctuates highly based on alt count. Let's take an average of 120 KPH and the pet rate for Prince Black Dragon being 1 in 3000, this pet rate only takes 25 hours to obtain. One of the fastest pets in the game. Good luck out there, and make sure you hover over your logout button when you're running to the cave. Oh! Oh 
okay, screw the six hour record. Oh, baby. Yes. There's pet number 12? 12. Yeah, big number 12. KVD pet is out of the way. 51 days play time, 12 pets. That's doing pretty good. I, uh, I, yeah, I cannot complain. KBD Pet took us four days and nearly 4,000 KC to obtain. This marks the fifth pet that I've obtained over rate out of the 12 we currently have. I don't have another dedicated pet hunt in the plans, so we're gonna hop around content for a bit. Maybe mess around with some minigame pets since we've been getting a ton of PVM pets recently. So I only picked up U-Logs, Dragon Dart Tips, and Dragon Pickaxes throughout the grind. Everything else I just left on the ground. You know, not bad for a nice quick pet hunt. I'm not going to be complaining. Let's sell these D-Picks off too. Nice, about 21 mil made in total. I am tired of having to go to the Blue Moon Inn every single night for dinner. I don't know how to cook. It's draining my bank account and it takes up to two hours every single day. You know what would fix this? HelloFresh's meal planning, where ingredients arrive at your doorstep pre-portioned and ready to cook with simple instructions so that even a troll couldn't mess this one up. Huh? With over 40 recipes, you won't need to worry about eating the same meal twice for a long time, and the menu is constantly changing due to in-season ingredients. Produce travels straight from farms, like our good friend Fred over in Lumbridge, straight to your doorstep. Pet hunting can be tiring. HelloFresh honestly just makes it easy for me to always have something nutritious on hand and ready to go for long days where I'm needing lots of energy. Use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use my code POGCOXYOCT16 to get 16 free meals plus free shipping. Offers for new subscriptions only, varies by plan across nine boxes. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code with your phone. Okay, three caskets, here we go. 194. Oh, uh, okay. Got it. Uh, 195. Okay, got it. Let's just get something special for 196. 196, what do you have? Okay, average. Burger chillin'. Can I have the tiara? <laughs> sure, man, it's all yours. Wow. I mean, he just looks better in it anyways. It's yours. And 346 CGKC. Man, what? What? What is my... L <laughs> this is my second enhanced weapon seed. 346kc. This is the first CGKC back after KVD Pet 2 today. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's still around 100 mil right now too. Money! Alright, let's sell this off. Wow, today is a lucky day so far. KVD Pet into first CG chest. Enhanced crystal weapon seed. Yes. There's 350 CG KC. That's going to be it for me today. But any day we get a new pet is a good day. Am I right? Or am I right? It's been a while since we've done a cheeky Temple Ross update. We hit 200 KC. All have been solo firefighter method. I'm going to try to do a minimum of a few hours a week just to slowly chip away at this pet drop rate because it's a 1 in 8k. That's a pretty long one. No. This patch is going to be my last farming level update because 99 farming, here we are. This is going to be our fourth 99 on the account in 2030 total. I'm still doing my morning farm runs each day, so the next update is likely just going to be the pet. But yeah, I'm going to miss my farming clips. Goodbye and until next time. Ladies and gentlemen, it's finally come time in the series. What is it time for? It's time for us to do Combat Achievement Elite Diaries. I need to finish them off. I've been working passively on them as I go to different bosses, and I'm just a couple hundred points away. I've made a list maximizing my points per boss that I can finish quickly. Technically, I've not received a pet at any of these places, so it's truly not even a time waste if you think about it as I'm just getting pet rules. If you need a reminder, elite combat achievements are very important because they give 5% extra elite clue chance throughout the whole game. This is an important diary in pet hunting, it just gives more rules for Bloodhound. 
which is the longest pet in the game. So that's never a bad idea. Please, man, just give me the five points. Oh, thank Christ. Okay, elite combat achievements are done. Now I never have to worry about this again. Ugh. It didn't take long, but real talk, some of these tasks are just not enjoyable in the slightest. Let's just shoot straight with each other. And time for the Slayer Helm upgrade. Let's check this bad boy out. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh wow, this looks bad. Wait, how does it look with range? Oh, nope, 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 nope. Still awful. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to rock this helmet either way because I'm never going to upgrade it and I don't know, it's better than the normal one. Um, yeah, so I might have just gotten a Dragon Harpoon and this is a rate of 1 in 8k, which is the exact same rate as the pet, but... How about this? Let's only focus on the positives. This is the final log slot for Temple Ross, so that means the next pop-up is 100% going to be the pet, and that I can never be baited again from a call log pop-up. You know, positives only. 363 KC, good luck us. Yee, the things we love to see. That is elite clue number three stack, so off to Watson we go, and off to Masters. Man, this feels better than an armor seed. Not as good as a Bofa, but definitely better than an armor seed. Oh, wait, yo, how fitting is this? We just talked about this in the last video, and once again, proving my point. Always open your clue and check your next step before teleporting out, because you never know when you're gonna get back-to-back -back steps. Nice little 30 second time save right here. Yes, sir. Alrighty, three master caskets. Mimic one first is gonna be 197. Okay, 198. Okay, and 199. Okay, all very average. Okay, okay, listen up. It's been a while since the last BA clip, and it's actually time I get some attack PBs. While I'm not using my scythe, I'm selling it temporarily for a third age bow, which, long story, but it's very quality of life to use when there's an east-sided collector. Anyways, that's an explanation for a different day though. There's 11.30 and my first PB of the day. I'm running with a pretty good team right now, so let's see what we can do. And 11-11 solo attack PB. Let's go. 19 seconds off as well with that. Hell yeah. Last CG of the day for me. 392 KC. Good luck. Okay. Nothing, but we did get an arm seed this session, so I'll take it. Okay, no lie, I know I'm a little weird, but I have really been enjoying my few hours of Temple Ross each morning while I'm trying to wake up. There's 86 fishing. I'm really curious to how high we'll get before the pet. The XP per hour with Firefighter is actually pretty bad. It's like under 50k an hour. So I don't expect we'll get that high fishing, but any fishing levels we get, that's just going to be a faster Heron pet either way. Yo, that is the big 400 CG KC for the account. And that's going to officially be half the rate of CG pet. CG Pet is definitely one of the longer ones in the game. It's definitely in the top 10, and 1 in 400 is also the rate of your first enhanced crystal weapon seed, which we've spooned to, but uh, yeah, that's a bit classic for this account. 200 Master KC flying in swiftly. That is one fifth of the Bloodhound rate, or 20%, which is pretty sweet. There's Casket 201 and 202 as well. Yo, okay, hear me out, hear me out. I said I wanted to start making progress towards non-PVM pets to balance out the amount of minigame and skilling pets versus the PVM pets that I have. Well, it's time to start up Guardians of the Rift. If you don't remember, I did 1 plus 1 lavas to 77 runecrafting so that I have all altars unlocked, so our points per game should actually be pretty decent. Anyways, here's to day one. Good luck us on spooning. Nice little 78 runecrafting. 
I don't think I'm going to be doing Mass Worlds for too long because I'm going to be honest, the XP per hour here is pretty bad. We're at 47.6k XP over the last three hours and the games seem really long. But for now, while I'm refamiliarizing myself with the minigame, I'm okay for staying for a bit. All right, a little bit over four and a half hours of Guardians of the Rift today. It is time for Gambas. Call log slot? Okay. Catalytic Talisman. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea what this does. Must be an Iron Man thing. Okay. Well, I definitely know what this does. Abyssal Lantern. Yes, this is actually so good to get early. This gives 10% more points within Guardians of the Rift with U logs in the Lantern. We got in 165 searches. This is a rate of 1 in 700 searches, so we definitely got lucky here. It's pretty late at night right now, so I can't be too loud, but let me just nerd out for two seconds. 1101 solo attack PB. That's actually pretty good. I have a crack team, but I'm happy with that. Check out that chat box. Yeah, that's right. I'm a speed chaser. <laughs> Okay, in all seriousness, Hesporium Master CA done, 31 second kill. Not that I need these points, we just finished Elite Diaries, but I cool nevertheless. Okay, good morning. The Mass Worlds are over. Instead, I'm going to do some small community teams, and we just obtained 79 runecrafting. These games, no lie, are two minutes quicker than the Mass Worlds, and I'm getting roughly the same points. So, realistically, I'm just never going back to Mass Worlds. This is way better points per hour and way quicker to the pet. You know the drill by now. Three caskets, here we go. 203, 204, and 205. Absolutely nothing to write home about. Oh, there's a call log pop-up. Abyssal Red Dye. Okay. Fashionscape has been upgraded. Nice. Another session done. So more searches. And just take a look at the chat box. Dupe Abyssal Lantern and Dupe Red Dye. On 468 searches. <laughs> I can't do anything with these dupes, but just funny luck. Oh, okay, wait, this is actually really good. Not that we could use it right now, but really, really good. We're 82 runecrafting. I can't make the colossal pouch, but at 85 runecrafting, we just got the abyssal needle. You can make colossal pouch, which is really good for giving extra points and XP while runecrafting inside the minigame and outside. Definitely going to speed up the pet hunt. Definitely a great thing to get before I'm 85 runecrafting. I've not done a level update in a while. We've been runecrafting for the past couple of days. I've gone from 77 to 83. I'm still doing small teams, and I've also started quick starting on a second world. This completely eliminates the free time at the start and saves about 30 seconds per game. Good for XP and great for the pet hunt. That's a win in my eyes. All right, one more Guardians of the Rift update. We just obtained the full outfit. Now, the outfit doesn't do anything for me, but 161 games, 652 searches, full outfit is done. Two of my pieces are dyed red, mind you. Fashion escape is still very important in these trying times, okay? Very important. Full transparency. There's no real reason I'm at Vorkath other than I kind of just wanted to hit a boss for a bit. Plus, I've not tried Void Waker out here yet. Aside from the consistent money, one of the best parts about this boss is that it craps out elite clues at a rate of 1 in 65. So, I was in the mood to get some boss KC and do some masters and, hey, it coughed up an elite. I just landed myself on an insane team, and this is easily going to be my PB. The amount of mistakes I made too is so embarrassing, but uh, yeah, let's see this time. Yes! Nice! 10.58. That is my first sub-11 solo attack. Sub-11 at all for four-man BA. Wow, that is sick. Bro, max FBA is so addicting. If you guys only see clips of me from Barbarian Assault for the next three months, listen, don't get mad at me. I can't help it. This is like a whole different game. With PVM plus Barbarian Assault comes Elite Clues, which leads to Master Caskets. 206, 207, and 208. No doggo today. You know, I'm kind of glad Lance forces me to train on shared XP so I can actually gain some defense XP. 89 defense and 120 combat. You know, I actually think it's time we need to finish maxing our stats. We've been 99 strength forever, and attack and defense have just been lacking. This kill is going to mark 104 Cath KC and where I'm going to stop for the day. I've been chatting with some friends, and tomorrow I'm going to start a boss that I've been looking forward to since the start of this series. 
a boss that absolutely prints out GP and hopefully will allow me to finish off buying Tumikin Shadow and Xerite Crossbow. Hello, my good friend. Next and I go all the way back to its release in 2011. The good days of Chaotix, Overloads, and Pakyax. Anyways, we're playing old school, but even now, the meta has changed a ton since its release on old school. With the addition of Fang and Void Waker, Melee has a big role in Next now, and I am stoked to try it out. Throughout this series, I'll only be doing small teams, duos, or trios, for not only the best pet chance, but also for the most money. I'm probably going to sesh this boss out all day, and definitely hope to see our first drop. Good luck to us. Here is going to be 10 KC. Oh, okay. Okay, well the pop-up baited me, but it's just a nilly shard. In small teams like this, I get a ton of KC on my alt, so it can come in and resupply me while I hold the instance open. You can see Malfoy's doing that right now. My teammates leave, quick bank, and re-enter before the fight starts. Each kill, this is saving over 30 seconds off the spawn time from Nex, and is vital to do for good kills per hour. I am out of combat pods, please just die Nex. Oh, yes, 24 KC? Xerite Van Braces are our first split, trio split as well. Nice, the first of many. Time for the best part of any PVM session. Collecting the split. Andrew, what do you have for me? 51.6? Wait, Xerite Van Braces are over 150 mil trio split. And that's one of the cheapest items you can get from Nex. Man, this next pet is gonna make us rich. I cannot wait to watch that bank value climb up. Probably my favorite part of getting a pet is knowing that I get a stat segment to break down all the numbers for you guys. Last episode was a bit of a hefty one, so let's keep this lesson short and sweet. We got King Black Dragon Pet on 3,964 KC, and its pet drop rate is a 1 in 3,000. Now, despite it being a fast pet, we did exceed the drop rate, and we were in the unlucky 26.67% of people who had to go this KC or more for their pet. In other terms, 73.33% of people obtained at least one KBD pet before my drop on 3,964. Throughout this grind, I averaged 150 kills per hour. To hit the pet drop rate of 1 in 3,000, that would take 20 hours, and I spent roughly 26 hours for the pet, landing me 6 hours unlucky for Prince Black Dragon. Not too bad. It could always be a lot worse. It has been six months and eight days since our account creation with an in-game playtime of 55 days and a bank value of 5.5 billion GP. We obtained our 12th pet, King Black Dragon, and on the same day, pulled our second enhanced crystal weapon seed. We close this episode out with 400 CG KC, half the rate for Hunliff, 99 farming, our fourth 99, elite combat achievements, and our first roles at Guardians of the Rift and Next Pet. Coming into this episode, we were 373 hours lucky. With King Black Dragon being slightly overrate, we lost 6 hours and shifted down to 367 hours lucky on the pets we currently have. We are on a hot streak right now, averaging 2 pets a month since our account creation. If we keep up this pace, it'll take just over 2 years and many episodes of Funny Feelings to complete all the pets in the game.